Good afternoon, Ooh, everyone. Um, welcome to the National Gallery of Victoria. My name is Ramonda Rakoski, and I'm part of the public programs uh, team here at the NGV. It's wonderful to see you all here uh, for Un Unplugged Live, Portrait of an Artist. Uh, this is a brand new uh, program series uh, which aims to celebrate the um, the permanent collection here at uh, NGV Australia and also to draw out some of the interesting narratives between music and art. Um, today's theme today's theme is Making It Overseas, Australian Artists. And um, I'd like to introduce um, Jay Laffer, uh, the music curator and um, the host of the program. <laughs> Thank you, Ray. And uh, we did have um, NGV curator Elena Taylor lined up to speak with Jay today, but unfortunately she isn't able to make it. So I have the great pleasure of stepping in and uh, discussing with Jay the work behind us to, the, to our right, uh, which is a work by Max Martin. Uh, it's titled uh, Portrait Group, and it was made in 1922. And uh, I just wanted to, to mention first up um, what's interesting about Max Martin, uh, and it's luckily for me, uh, he's quite an obscure artist. Um, he rose to uh, fame very briefly in the 1920s and then he faded into obscurity after, shortly after that. And then he, uh, he, you can kind of call him a, a one-hit wonder which is kind of a nice idea when you, when, when you think of artists. Cause usually is that strange at the time? Like so many people we've talked about in these galleries around us were, you can't even say what year they were famous because they were lifelong dedicated artists. Yeah. And this guy, I'm intrigued by him because he came along, he made a great impression at the, you know, in London with this particular work. Yeah. And then all of a sudden he just kind of left. I, I kind of, not that that's cool, but I kind of like that about him where something happened where he thought, no, I've, yeah, like, I've, made, my, I've made my moment and, that, and that'll do. Yeah, it's definitely an interesting um, idea for an artist because we, we usually expect, uh, you know, coming to a gallery, the works on display, you, you expect it to be prominent artists who have been working all their lives and had, you know, uh, gained success, you know, throughout that time. But we can pretty much sort of narrowly sort of uh, pinpoint... Um, Max Martin's fame to the 1920s with this work um, that was shown in the Academy, uh, Royal Academy in London and uh, another work following that as well. Um, we also know very little about um, Max Martin and his life and there's also a few surviving paintings and I believe that the State Library have three in their collection. And we have this one here and as I mentioned it was um, displayed at the Royal um, uh, Academy uh, in London, which I'll talk more about shortly. Yeah, because I was going to ask you, I, I did ask you about that before, yeah. where I was like, everyone we've talked about, a lot of the Australian painters, of course, I guess being a country in the empire, there was so much talk of uh, this London Royal Academy. And I was, just, I asked Eleanor on the phone when I was finding about a Max here, and I was like, what is this Royal Academy? Yeah. Why did it mean so much? Was it the benchmark of uh, you know, just Australian artists or yeah. English artists or people in the world, what was it about this that was like people like aspired to be a part of that? It was very much uh, the place to, to go uh, in terms of studying. Uh, so it's an art school, uh, the first art school in Britain, um, and it still continues today. Uh, they also hold um, uh, an open call uh, annual summer exhibition. That's what um, I was going to ask you about, because yeah. you don't have to necessarily study That's at the right. Royal Academy. You yeah. can and try your luck yeah. with a painting. Because it was open call, you, it was a great place to uh, be discovered um, and also recognised as an artist. So it was a real uh, sort of... It, it was recognised as... Uh, the, regarded as the pinnacle of, of success and, um, and it was a real honour for Max um, Martin to be selected for that exhibition. Um, so I, I wanted to actually talk a little bit about his um, upbringing because it was quite a, he had a tough up, upbringing. Um, he was born in um, 1889. Uh, he, his, he was abandoned by his father and uh, he also grew up in poverty in Fitzroy in, in Melbourne and he worked in factories um, in that area and only had a, a little bit of art education um, in Collingwood. And uh, interestingly as well, which uh, the whole theatre aspect to his work, he, uh, um, work, he performed in a... Um, 
uh, vaudeville troupe, which is uh, theatrical entertainment, um, and he, uh, which isn't a surprise because he uh, was, uh, seemed to be very interested in the whole uh, scene painting in theatre. It's something he returned to a number of times, and it was something he picked up when he moved uh, to Sydney in 1910. It seemed quite common with a few of the artists we've discussed was that people, for obviously a lot of people didn't make a lot of money out of what they were doing. That's right. Like, like all of us are painters now or musicians or whatever. And so, but one of the main things that they seemed to be taken in to do was scene painting in the theatre. Yeah. Do you know much more about that? Was it a very common thing? It seems like something that there wouldn't it, be a, a huge amount of work, but a, yet a way really to make money. Work. And yeah. and if you had the skills, uh, it was certainly you know uh, obvious uh, to to sort of uh, paint those sort of realistic uh, scenes that uh, sometimes a lot of the productions and plays were were asking for. So the skills helped, and uh, certainly yeah. Um, it was a way to make money. And uh, eventually he made enough money to do what all these uh, mini artists did at the time, which was to uh, travel to London. And uh, London was the place to be at the time. And um, let me just look at... Uh, his intentions to uh, travel to London was to uh, study at the uh, National Gallery in London, and, uh, but he wasn't admitted. And uh, he worked as a sign painter instead after that. I'm more in tune with what musicians are up to and their aspirations. In the modern day, do the painters of Melbourne or Sydney, is, is London still the go? Is Europe still the place to go? Or is, there, is there a certain pride yeah, where yeah. they're not too bothered or yeah, what, what, what goes on there? I know today uh, a lot of the, the young artists, um, their aspirations is to go to LA or Berlin. Um, so it's, it's still, uh, I think uh, after European sort of, Europe being the place to go, it shortly moved to America within the, during the 1950s and 60s. But now it seems to be both Europe and America, just depending. I mean, LA and Berlin, uh, is that for the art scenes that Residencies, you know? lot, yeah. Lot, yeah, and art scenes, and also the, the way that um, the opportunities, and I think as soon as you get a residency, you, you, you want to be traveling. So yeah, but those, those are sort of two key places I, I hear quite often these days. I think they just sound like two very fun cities. That's right, yeah, that's true Regardless. Too. Yeah. Um, so just to mention that um, Max married in 1917 and his daughter was born three years later. And uh, it, that brings us to this painting because it actually depicts uh, his family. And um, as, as I mentioned, this work was uh, shown at the Royal Academy in 1922 when it was made. And it became um, the, the sensation of that year's exhibition. Do you reckon you can elaborate on that? Because I've just made a note just before. You said this, this became the sensation of the Royal Academy. And I mean, it's such a placid painting. What is it about yeah. a family portrait? I was just curious, and you may not know, so don't be put on the spot, well, but I, what I, is it about that? Is it the style? Know, yeah, it's the style. I think, um, I don't know the specifics, but um, they, uh, at the time, it, the academy was still quite conservative, so the idea of portraying a, a family, a modern family, in this way, you know, is quite casual, and and uh, the the characters uh, aren't uh, necessarily friendly. You know, the um, there's a lovely a little description that I can paraphrase uh, on the label there. Um, but uh, Martin depicts himself as a bohemian, his flamboyant tan o shanter hat, velvet coat and striped trousers were very much artistic clothing of the time. His, Hild uh, his wife Hilda, eyes downcast, looks somewhat downtrodden and it uh, is the fierce little Lorna staring out at us that holds our attention and it's, it's quite an unusual way to de depict a family so it was quite a statement I would imagine, um, yeah. The young daughter is very intense. <laughs> I, I, I like that uh, his most known painting, he, he just looks like a lord and he's painted himself yeah. in such a proud manner. I like that. And the little girl's eyes are quite black, so it's quite a, <laughs> quite a, a shock. It's quite a stunning thing to see these eyes peering back at you. Do you know much more about the Royal Academy? When I imagine when people had work selected in it or it was... Um, uh, you know, praised in London at the time, that back home in Australia, much like maybe a band getting on the cover of the NME or yeah. something, it would have been like, uh, you know, people would have taken him a lot more seriously and they may yeah. not have before, that kind of thing. It was the thing that you put on your CV as an artist and it would uh, give you instant recognition and, um, 
and yeah, fame basically. And that, that was what you needed to, to succeed as an artist. So he had everything going for him in, in, in that sense. I also wanted to point out the, um, the frame because that's quite interesting, I, I found. Uh, it was, uh, it's original and it was designed by the artist. And if you get a chance to look up close, it uh, looks like it's uh, stained black. Um, and sort of carved uh, away uh, to expose the um, sort of a pattern of uh, exposed wood, wooden timber, sort of the timber underneath. So it's quite an a unusual thing to sort of pair up with this, this work. It's, it really makes a statement together with the, the frame and the painting. So. This guy sounds like a very unique person, very individual. I mean, it's really, really cool that he made such quality work, but only a yeah. few pieces yeah. are known in the State Library here. I know I've seen one in um, amongst the portrait section yep. um, and this one. But There so was, there but is actually, yeah, there's a, a portrait he... Um, he, one of the reasons he uh, didn't quite make it as a, a career as an artist was that he stopped selling work at, at one point and even stopped uh, exhibiting. Um, and uh, he did get asked uh, to paint a portrait of, um, let me just read here, the controversial Cardinal Man uh, Mannix, um, which is at the State Library, so you might be familiar with that one. Do you know why this Cardinal was controversial? <laughs> I'm not sure, I'm not sure the backstory, but it's intriguing. Like, I, I can imagine um, uh, Martin sort of, put, you know, being able to capture a, a controversial oh, figure. Without going into that, then it's also intriguing that an artist would stop selling their work yes. or selling their best work to galleries or to, because I imagine that's the best way of getting known that's to right. the world. Do you know why? I, I have no idea why. And that's one of the things about um, him being an obscure artist is that little information. So we can only guess, really. Um, and it, it's something that, um, you know, not all artists want the fame or there, there could be other issues. This is around the, the time of the wars, um, the, you know, uh, between the wars as well in the 1930s. Um, so it's, um, yeah, lots of factors at play. So, it, you know, it's hard to guess the, his um, reasons for not pursuing that further yeah. as he could have. It is intriguing, though, because I imagine he was doing everything he could to break out of working in factories in Melbourne, the same stuff that people are still doing, and you have a, yeah. s a brief moment in your artistic life where people are pushing you and trying to work uh, with you to yeah. bring your name out there, and he's kind of gone, you know what, this is not for sale, this one. I like yeah. this one, I'm going to keep it for and myself. And it was his major There's something works. about that that I really like yeah. a lot about the guy, but of course his career never went yeah. forward from there, but maybe that's just because, like you say, he wasn't... He wasn't a careerist, he was just all about, I have to paint, I have to do it That's right, this well yeah. and I have to do that. So yeah. at least it's nice bringing people's attention to Max and the fact that he has some works around Melbourne, his hometown. That's right. And they are kind of, in their own way, small masterpieces, yeah. you know? Yeah. So he returned back to Melbourne um, in, the in 1950 and he, he did end up working back in the factories and painting, sadly, in his spare time and um, he passed away I think in um, 1965. That's so a really happy sad. story. <laughs> or happy, yes, yeah. happy, sad. <laughs> yeah, it's a story, it's yeah. an interesting story. Well I'm glad we chose Max today because we've talked about some of the classic Australian painters so far this season and then measured some of the music uh, in the other room against it so it's nice choosing someone, so many great musicians you probably never heard of in your life or will never you know, make it overseas at very least, or you might know someone locally who's just d making classic songs, but of course, you know, their the planets don't align to make it happen. Yeah. So if you're done, yes. then I'm happy to kind of say thank you. Thank and you. And we're gonna continue the discussion about uh, Australian artists abroad uh, in a musical sense with Glenn Richards from Augie March. He's in the other room. We're gonna play a bunch of songs um, and discuss his creative life and uh, his life overseas and that kind of thing. So thank you, Thanks. Ray. We'll see you now.